Do you see many similarities between the two? No, you didn't handle him. No? <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever kind of witness to the hair dry treatment? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Properly. I mean, full on purple faced mm. rage. Yeah. It, the right decision for United to sack him when they did. He didn't win enough matches. And I want to see more from Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, you're right. Yeah. They're a long way off the top clubs at the moment. Hi guys, and welcome to Full Time Devils. It is the Peaky Pundit here, and I'm joined alongside Pav, and we've got a very, very special guest uh, alongside us as well for today's interview. It is sports journalist, sports and football enthusiast as well, widely respected reporter Des Kelly. Absolutely, so he's interviewed a large list of big football names over the years and in today's uh, video we're going to be asking uh, about his kind of experiences from that, behind the scenes stories and his thoughts on all things Manchester United. Yeah, so, oh, we're, good. we're in this room. Without any further ado, oh, no, Des. up in the hotel. Welcome to here. Full Time Devils. We were knocking on the door, we dragged Des out of bed. Uh, but look, Des, look, as we are a dedicated Manchester United fan channel, uh, I suppose we've got to jump straight into it. There's only one place to start. Um, let's talk about the current feeling and the atmosphere around Manchester United, um, the, okay. comparing it to the glory days of Sir Alex Ferguson. Recently in a press conference, Ashley Young uh, likened Solskjaer to Sir Alex Ferguson. Do you see many similarities between the two? No. <laughs> I mean, the, the only similarity is they, they share a, a common background. I, I don't think in terms of approach or personality they're in, in any way similar. I mean, it's a nice link. I'm not sure how relevant it is these days now. I think Oli Gunnar Solskjaer has to stand up on his own two feet, and he is, I think. Um, so the references to, to Sir Alex are, are, are a compliment. It's a positive step in many ways, but equally, it just reminds you of where Manchester United are now as opposed to then. Where they were mm. then. Let's go a little further into mm. Sir Alex, Des. I mean, um, many journalists, you could say over time, you know, some maybe feared him, had some difficulty handling him. Uh, around you, his... You're sorry, you didn't handle him. No? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about, about how, how he was around the media then, it, was that difficulty? Um, um, I, he was combustible, he mm. was protective, um, he would let you know if yeah. he disagreed. Um, often he would get angry at coverage, um, often because it was correct. I mean, there's nothing worse than having something come out that's actually right. So, you know, transfer demands, contract issues. So it was, he was a powerful figure. He wanted to control the club. And part of that is trying to control mm. the media, which is a difficult game anyway. But he was one of the few who got away with it, I think. Were you well, ever kind of witness to the hair dry treatment? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Properly. I mean, full on purple faced mm. rage. Yeah. And, uh, um, I live to tell the tale and I, <laughs> I still see him at football matches because he goes to United mm. Games and uh, talk to him when I'm away. Um, yeah, he's, yeah, of course. I mean, you wouldn't be doing your job properly unless you upset him once in your life, I think. <laughs> Having kind of first-hand experience of the hairdryer treatment, can you see now how or why he potentially got the best out of his players or that extra 5 or 10% uh, because he had that kind of inferior uh, kind of presence around his team? Yeah, it I wasn't because he, part of it is it's not fear, as, it is fear, you're right. It's, it's, that, it's also the, the idea that you were going to disappoint him. He did have a, a, a bond with his players. It wasn't just him just shouting. I mean, yeah. he was just very good at man management. And he would, you know, he would give stroke players egos, he would build them up, but equally he would have a, a rage in the dressing room like most managers do. I, I think it's changed over time. I think it, it's a bit more... Um, how could I put it? Uh, loving and caring environments and all this goes. Uh, Fergie's probably not one for that, but he did look after his players really well and young players. Um, so he was very protective. And I think that's where most of, of the stories and the rage came from is this idea that he wanted this to be Manchester United. He wanted to control it, bring it in a certain direction. He didn't want distractions and people interfering with it. And obviously, post Sir Alex Ferguson, United have had four managers through the door, all who have brought their own kind of personalities with them. Yeah. What, one manager in particular I wanted to speak to yourself about was Jose, because uh, I know you've got, or ha it seems like you've got a nice relationship with him, um, respectable relationship between the two of you. Why do you think the press gave him such a difficult time, and was it the right decision for United to sack him when they did? He didn't win enough matches. That simple as that? Yeah, you can get away with anything if you're winning. Yeah. Um, I, and he... He ended up in a, a, a kind of spiral of criticism, justifiable in many respects. He, a lot of the things that Jose said about the team kind of came true. You saw that happen yeah. again, right? Yeah. So when when Oli came in and there was this spike of, of performance, everyone thought, well, he was, he's obviously got it wrong. But then that tailed off quite quickly. And, it was, I, and a lot of jo what Jose said was correct. The, there's weaknesses in certain positions. In terms of my relationship with him, I just found him good to interview. Yeah. Um, and... 
rather than sort of, I, I think if you chat to him, you get a lot more out of him than yeah. mm. poking him all the time. <laughs> I, mean, I did an interview when he was at um, Chelsea and Liverpool in, in the new Klopp era had just beaten him 3-1, I think. And he came in and I knew he was going to do something. He just felt he was going to do something. So we moved everything around. See, let the spies are here, they're drilling overhead. And that's the, that'll be Fergie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen <laughs> to trying to listen in, yeah. What are they saying? Um, Jose Mourinho came into the interview room. It's quite a small, compact little space in Stamford Bridge. And you could feel that something was going to happen. So we moved the camera. And I have a floor manager called Chuck Taylor. who's a big unit. He's yeah. a former ice hockey mm. player. So he stood there and I'm in the middle. And so he couldn't get out. So once he's in, he's in. Okay. And... Um, so he's, the first answer to his first question was, I have nothing to say. Now, that's a killer of an interview, isn't it? <laughs> so I had to keep him there because I'm conscious of the fact that we, we still need you. So I just kept him there and just kept asking him questions. You know, what about this during a game? What about that? I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. Wow. I have nothing to say. I said, what about your position? I have nothing. What? He said, he said well, what about my position? I said, well, you, I have nothing to say. And he said, so he's always been that kind of character he's going to get something I mean at Old Trafford he was, said he was blamed for Brexit mm. um, as the night he turned up he just jumped off the bus and ran in in a hoodie and himself yeah. you know he's, he, I found him thoroughly entertaining and yeah he got a bit moody and sulky at times but I would as well who doesn't yeah, yeah. so looking at kind of our current manager in Oli um, one thing we've noticed from kind of press conferences and interviews from when he first started to where we are now his energy's kind of dipped a little bit I mean we were talking maybe United have kind of drained it out of him have you kind of noticed that <laughs> no, he's no the longer time? the baby faced well, assassin well, when you're new it's like anything when yeah. you're new it's like, I mean look at you guys now you've been got, doing this for months I got married four years ago that's why <laughs> yeah, yeah. what's this called again there should be pints and pundits yeah. I, mean, we, I have no peaky hat you don't there's no pints so after a while that, that yeah. of course you expect, he's going to be asked the same sort of questions mm. Also, he's had a bad run of results. I'm, just, I'm sure he was a bit perkier last night after mm. the win. Um, and it gets to a point... I, I want to see more from Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, you're right. Yeah. But then I think he's very professional. I think you have to be careful when you are losing of what you're going to say and what you're going to promise. Mm. So he's probably double-thinking everything he's saying, just like we are now. <laughs> that kind of leads me on to the next question, because when Oli came in, it was like almost like a breath of fresh air into the football club. It was, club. Yeah. Um, You know, he kind of just lifted everyone's kind of spirits we mm -hmm. saw that with the results as well in the first sort of 12 yeah. to 15 sort of games um have you seen any kind of trends or anything changing in the way he presents himself to the media is he too soft could he be a bit yeah. firmer sometimes ah. it just, it's it's firmer in what way i mean so, so jose Mourinho used to get pelters for criticizing players yeah and you know the criticism was often justified Equally, um, there are managers who never give any criticism of their players and then they're, they're accused of living in a dreamland. I think Ollie's found a middle path. He, he says what he expects from players. He's been talking about Mason Greenwood and things during the week. Expects, he gives his expectation without overhyping them, I think. So and that's, I think that's a good path to be on. And when do you think it's going to kind of set Ollie up for the rest of the season? Are we going to see him here for the remainder of the season? Again, you win. You can do pretty much anything you like. You can get away with it. So if he... They're a long way off the top clubs at the moment, and he knows that. And United play in patches and bursts, uh, and they've looked a little bit uninspired, and they're relying on young players heavily, which is always dangerous. I mean, we've seen Chelsea do a little bit of that, and it's working for them, but that's with a basis of, of, of experienced professional players playing really well, and they have a very creative midfield. And that's what Oli has to do. He has to find that mix. And I, don't th I think the midfield is misfiring in terms of creativity, and that causes a problem for everybody. One, one of the things we kind of saw from the summer was the change in direction from, you know, rather than the big marquee signings, we went with, we still spent money, but we went with kind of British for the long term. Spent money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of money. On, ask um, Harry Maguire. <laughs> so kind of looking at the new direction of our kind of recruitment strategy, do you think that's the right way to go? Or do you think there is still room for a, the big names to come in maybe in January of the summer? Yeah. I asked this of the Ajax manager during the week, is mm. this the academy plans, you know, with Chelsea bringing players through, they had to, to be fair. Um, he said it's a romantic idea, but the big clubs will always buy big. So having academy players coming through is a great, it's, it's mm. part of it, but that, I don't think it's the model. It's the model for clubs like further down the Premier League table and the yeah. championship, but no, all big clubs will buy big mm. because they'll want that star name, they'll want that extra special player. And... They either develop it or they buy it. Obviously, in the first team at the moment, um, the youngsters coming through, 
Greenwood, Garner, uh, Tahith Chong, Gomez. They've got players like Martial and Rashford to kind of look up to. Um, how do you feel, like from the class of 92 when they were coming through and they had big personalities to look up to, do you think football obviously has changed as a game over the last decade or so, but do you think these, these youngsters are, are ready to be thrown into the mix to, to kind of mix it with the big boys? Yes and no. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Some of them will come in and do well for a couple of games and then get taken out. And you will you can only judge that when you look back in two or three seasons. I, so Rashford had a dip at the start of the season. When he came in against Michelin, it was a, it was a real big deal. and yeah. it was, it was, it, it, He had a little <laughs> momentum there, but then he was taken out of the firing line a little bit and then brought back in. So I think he will nurse his players. I, I, James is one who's... I think performed better than people thought, and his, yeah. his, his pace and his spark has been really important. But again, he's at some point he's going to need to be taken out of the firing line. You can't just keep going and going and going with these players. They'll have a little dip in form, um, an injury, and he's one I would care for. He's a, a proper talent. He's probably the one we spoke about mm. quite a lot, didn't we, over the summer? Because we both expected him to come in and be a bit part so, player, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. he's impact player for twenty minutes or something. That's what everyone thought. But he's been he's been great, and that is a sign of. His ability, but also a sign that the United weren't playing well. But I mean, he shouldn't be outshining some of these players some on the, the pitch. Players. Yeah, and he's been he's been fabulous. Well, it's a compliment to him. Right, guys. So that does bring us to the end of part one. But hang around, don't go anywhere. There is a part two. Des is on a tight schedule, so we're working no, no, towards I it. So that went quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we are going to be bringing you guys a part two. So you can check that out by clicking the link in the description of this video or clicking on the end screen. It will take you to the Peaky Pundit channel uh, where we've got some more insightful questions and hopefully answers, I'm sure, from Des as well. Manchester United aren't at the club that will languish in 13th. But they're not good enough to mix it with the top four at the moment. You can't do long-term gains if you're Manchester United. It's essential that Manchester United mm. win regularly. <laughs> and he said, I said, I've talked about some of this before. And I said, well, not on TV, you haven't. So here we go. Yeah. Anyway. I would love to sit down with Eric Cantona. Night fun. out with Georgie Best? Uh, well, I don't, I've interviewed George a few times. Yeah, so I've seen all sorts of little things in the tunnel, but right, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's football, isn't it? Yeah.